Hello, hello, everybody. Mm. Welcome back to episode seven or eight, depending on <laughs> by depending on my editing of episode six of uh, yeah. Free Flow with uh, me, Saoirse Rattigan, and my darling cousin Julia Juju. Hello. Um, yeah, we're excited today. I think we're both a little bit like. Where am I? What's going on? Um, just I don't know why it's just very dark this evening and it's kind of dull um, day. Yes, we have slightly. Yeah, it's been a bit of a dull day on this side, to be honest. Um, I think the voice recording for this will be fine. If you're watching it on YouTube, we don't. I mean, to be honest, both of us don't have the best of internet, so um, it might yes. kind of you know pause a bit. But we'll just keep rolling, Julia. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, as long as we can. Yeah. So today we're um, today we're gonna dive into um, what uh, Red School have kind of coined um, the I think they call it the three menstrual maps um, or possibly okay. the three inner maps. Um, but we're gonna do a little a kind of a little exploration of them. Um, and maybe before we do so, I'm trying to remember what cycle day I'm on today, Julia. <laughs> you were on four lesson, I was on yeah, yeah, I'm on cycle day nine today, I believe. So I'm five. We did a recording. <laughs> how are you feeling today yeah okay yeah I'm all right I'm oh. sort of heading into spring so uh-huh. maybe spring tomorrow I don't know <laughs> who knows yeah. do you feel like having had a chat on our last so we for, for those that uh, those people listening to this recording we actually recorded um the crossover days recording yes. yesterday um yes. And I'm intrigued. Do you feel like you're in a crossover day today? Uh, I feel maybe a little bit at the start of the day, but I feel much more settled now. So, okay, yeah. Yeah, yesterday was a sort of, it was a bit of a funny day, but today, yeah, I would say it's kind of things have settled down a bit. And that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's spring tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know because yeah, yeah. things feel a bit more yeah Something. calmer but um, yeah who okay. knows what about you what is nine for you is that transition nine for me I I'm kind of still kind of working out my transition days I think because I feel <laughs> like they just change a bit and as you yeah. know like my cycle sometimes it's 24 days and sometimes it's 26 it seems to be 26 when yeah. it's like the darker months um oh, yeah. so I feel like just when I kind of get Depending on it, it like changes a little bit, you know. <laughs> <There's a shift. laughs> um, and I think, yeah, for me, I don't know. It's 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 tricky. I feel do you feel a little bit like flat today? I slept for like nearly twelve hours, oh, yeah. and then I woke up and I was like, oh, my alarm hasn't gone off because I forgot to set it. Yeah. So I just kind of thought oh, I could definitely have another hour's sleep. <laughs> I was still really tired. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, okay, it's half past eleven in the morning. You probably get up. Um, so I'm a bit like, oh, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I feel a bit kind of flat and then a bit overwhelmy but I think it's just that you know should be doing all of the things and I'm like it's all sure it's fine you know? <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's so and I've done a lot today it's cool it's okay you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yes so that's kind of where I'm at today a little bit sort of mm-hmm. um I think I'm just craving routine I start my new job soon so I think I'm kind oh, of craving yeah. that um yeah or giving yeah. even just giving myself a bit more of a thing tomorrow I think but yes yeah. okay well so um we'll do a little um overview to begin with I'm going to look down because I've got my notes and um I'm definitely feeling a bit like I don't know maybe scattered today I don't know what it is I don't know what it is guys but we're rolling with it I'm feeling good I'm happy to be here I just thought and de- it's definitely a notes in front of me kind of day <laughs> I don't ramble um so yeah so I uh, uh really enjoy um reading and and doing my course with Red School um mm-hmm. and their book is called um Wild Power um they have another one that's just come out called Wise Power which I believe is all about oh, um okay menopause yeah I'm really excited to to get my hands on that um in the next couple of months but wild power is a really great like starting point i'm going to leave a couple of links um in the show notes wherever you're seeing this or listening to this um because i am uh sort of um yeah it's really it's really this language of the maps has really come from shana and alexandra and their work um they make up red school so i just want to make that really clear um and you know 
for the love of God, read the book, uh, Wild Power. It's, it's an incredible book. And it'll really dive into this in much more detail. But I kind of wanted to yeah. give an overview of it today because we we kind of mentioned it in other um in other parts of the podcast and it will come up again in the future. So I just thought this way, everyone's kind of on the same page. Um, so the three menstrual maps, we've got um, the, the two vias, we've got the seasons, and then we've got the menstrual chambers. So the map of the two vias is really looking at um, these sort of, sort of currents of energy. So we have this sort of expanding energy um, as we go into our, um, ovulation period and we kind of have this like contracting energy as we go into our menstruation period so mm. really how it's explained with, with Shani Alexandra is this kind of um almost like the via the via positiva is sort of your inner spring and your inner summer and it's um that more kind of outward energy it's quite expansive it's um you know maybe your if you imagine it as like introvert extrovert maybe it's more extroverted energy and whereas your um via negativa is your um sort of more contracting energy that's your inner autumn and your inner winter and for me that feels more um it's sort of like an introverted energy, much more of like a reflective um, kind of energy. And we sort of touched on that a little bit in um, the last episode. And then, of course, we explored it a lot over the the, the first four episodes because we looked at the the seasons. Um, uh-huh. And so we can kind of have that. So it's almost like if you imagine like a big circle, where you can kind of split it in half and you can have yeah. via positiva, via negativa. And then within that, you can have your sort of four quadrants and that can be your, your season. So you're in a summer you're in a spring um in a winter and in an autumn um and really they they kind of talk about it as a sort of the the via positive and the via negativa is kind of this the power of saying yes and also the power of saying no right it's mm-hmm. it's kind of I think it's much yeah. easier to say yes when you're ovulating and you have that energy it's mm-hmm. much easier to want to say no in your inner autumn for example when you know yeah. you don't have that energy and you're kind of waning and um you know it's like no this is me time now <laughs> this is yeah me time part of my yeah. cycle um, yeah um so definitely so that's kind of the, the sort of first you know layer and then um and we kind of have our our inner seasons after that um so we've obviously got menstruation happening in the inner winter um we've got um pre-ovulation happening follicular phase in the inner spring we've got ovulation in the inner summer and then we've got our inner autumn which is probably one everyone knows best with the pre-menstruum <laughs> kind of time of the cycle um and and so I just really love it because Shani and Alexandra really provides this language that we can use to speak about these. Because, I mean, before that, it's just like, I mean, and even just before, you know, learning about it, because it's quite, I can't remember how long they've been doing this, but maybe sort of, um, I'm sure a long time, but in terms of having the book out, it's probably been maybe 10 years. I'm not even sure it's been that long since oh, Wild Power wow. came out. Um, so I think it's still fairly new. Yeah, um, it might it might be a bit longer, but it's still pretty, you know, pretty new, really, when we think about it and having this yeah. language. Yeah. And it's certainly a language that I grew up with um, yeah. because you don't learn it in school. And maybe we didn't even really have, you know, people pioneering it like they have. Um, but even yeah. just to be able to have it as the seasons and you're like, oh, my God, this yeah. is like it's just golden information. It's like, how <laughs> do we not think of that? You know, yeah, it's a bit like in the last episode when we were sort of talking about that, that, that in between time of sort of. Um, Christmas and New Year being a bit like the void um, <laughs> and and this time of year now being like the crossover days of like the next couple of weeks yeah. of January it's like I don't want to leap into the new year I'm kind of you know easing in yeah. Um, yeah. and it's just having this language and how it mirrors nature so clearly it's almost yeah. like duh like <laughs> and it this work is 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 you know is 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 years and years and years and years it's hundreds of years old but it's having yeah. the language that Alexandra and Shani have really kind of distilled um through their work and their exploration um and I just love it so there will be some links yeah in the show notes to some of their articles where they they have a bit more info on it because otherwise we could be talking all day about just (laughs) via positivo you know so yeah (laughs) I just thought it was good to kind of have that basis because we really let him with the seasons because I think that's the most clear and I also think that 
you know, it is via positiva and via negativa, but being in the via negativa isn't a negative thing. It's just sort of the, yeah. the, the name of it, but it's sort of the positive yeah. and the negative. You kind of need to have both, right? So in order to sort of thrive and to have that balance. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And so obviously we won't dive into the the seasons because we've, you know, we've got a lovely um, episode on each season already. And I'm sure there'll be more to come because there's always, there's just so much more information that's always coming through and experience. <laughs> and I just Every find summer. it so fascinating yeah Mm. and I was just (laughs) wondering Julia we kind of touched upon this in the last episode but do you feel knowing now a bit more about the via positiva and negativa do you feel like you're at home in one half more than the other how do you how do you kind of feel about it or you're not sure yet uh yeah I'm not sure because I think before knowing the information if you'd asked me I would have said well obviously summer obviously that's the best Mm. season but actually sometimes it's not because you're so wired basically you're so like you know life is happening I can create life Mm -hmm. Ah." like you know there's so much going on it can be quite overwhelming and you just you can't just sit in one place like you want to be up and out and doing Mm. if you're not it's frustrating and then the autumn is the opposite like if you're up and out and doing loads of stuff you're like oh my gosh I'm so tired why and then you realize why (laughs) yes Mm, yes. yes. why did I do this to myself yeah (laughs) why did I plan all this stuff in my autumn um so I actually kind of I am leaning more towards the negativa side at the moment Mm. because I think you said yesterday it's like a permission slip to, to mm-hmm. and or say no yeah or just sit down or just rest or just be on your own and be happy with that and not um I actually yes. I notice more in my autumn I don't check my phone like if my phone has a load of messages I'm like oh my gosh it's too much whereas in my summer I'm like mm. I have no messages what's what's happening with my life I need things to mm. happen, you know so it's almost more frantic yes. and that's equally exhausting but in a different way and it's but I kind of like the um yeah that sort of permission to slow down and rest and um the I I do I do care less about what people think of me in my autumn which is really nice (laughs) really refreshing yeah it's very um it's very freeing liberating yeah yeah it is liberating and um, maybe it's also an age thing you know as we head into our mid-30s maybe it's just like so. that's what happens and you just care less about the things that don't matter so much but I think definitely mm-hmm. I yeah if you'd have asked me initially I would have been like oh obviously summer ovulation that's the best time but now I would mm-hmm. say for yeah autumn winter obviously there's tough bits as well because you also feel there's a pressure that kind of builds up that is released with the winter with day one it's like a Mm. it's kind of like a sigh um (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so that there is so there are tough things but I would say probably that I'm just really enjoying yeah being less bothered about things in autumn and and being more uh focused on what uh, like self-care I guess and then also the, the um when you like you have this lovely phrase which is bleed on it you know if I'm worried about something you're like oh Julia just bleed on like you're about to have your period just bleed on it and I am really like noticing Mm. stuff coming through during my period and it's really nice because before this work I would have just been like oh the period oh it's just a pain it's just a pain it's just a thing I have Mm. and now I'm like you know I get to the end of autumn and I'm like I kind of want my period to start and I'm looking forward to what's going mm. to be on it. So, yeah, so that's yeah. a bit negative, yeah. but like I, I'm leaning more towards that, I would say. Um, mm. And I think you, you say the same, right? You're like, you're quite enjoying your um, yeah. that side. Yeah, I think I... Yeah, I think I kind of mentioned that yesterday. The and mm. again, the bleed on it method. That's towards the back of the Wild Power book, and they really talk about the bleed on it. And um, it's just so it's so helpful. And I think I think it was during. It's not in the book. I think it was during the the menstrual leadership program that I just finished. 
And I'm sure that Shane and Alexandra were saying, you know, as you're journaling as well, you're really kind of taking dictation from the divine when you're on your bleed. And I was like, that's so true. Because when I'm just, you know, writing, it's almost like you're channeling. And I never really got the whole channeling thing until I was like, oh, I'm not really thinking this, writing it. It's like a free flow. <laughs> Pardon the pun. And um, <laughs> so many nice things that one. came up when I named this. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, free flow is in, you know, you're just flowing and you you know, don't have pads and stuff. Free flowing is speaking, free flowing is writing. If anyone's read The Artist's Way um, and done those practices, you, you kind of know what I mean with the, the, the morning pages. But um, and they really talk about dictation from the divine during during our um, during our calls and things. And I was like, yeah, that's actually that's what it you know, that's what it feels like. And mm-hmm. um, I really enjoy that. And I didn't do that that much. Um the last couple of months, even though I've been off work, I've been in between contracts. I really thought I would do more of it. Um, but I was also just, I've just been a bit of a vagabond of his thing at like various places, <laughs> including Julius. I've been kind of staying at different places. I had like the really, I had terrible jet lag, which doesn't normally affect me. Mm. I had the really bad flu. So just kind of time has been a bit weird. Um, and obviously I've just tried to rest as much, but it's not the same as like when I'm in my own home and just um, in that own space. So that's quite interesting to see, you know, how that kind of feels. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say as I've gotten older, um, I think more of the, I think I'm naturally more, um, I'm definitely like in in the middle, like an ambivert. I think probably more introverted by nature, but actually have learned over the years how to be extrovert, both in terms of like, ADHD masking and masking those things and you know understanding like what's ex- what's uh, accepted uh, uh, expected of me um wow. in you know uh, uh, jobs and things like so it's it's interesting I'm not you know I was very very quiet when I was younger and I really just wanted to read everything and um but I also loved performing and it was very like I, I used to get terrible stage fright you know because it's such yeah. a, I just love doing it but it's like I'm also being a character not being me so <laughs> yeah um yeah Yeah. but as I've gotten older I think that yeah I'm more comfortable and you know we spoke about this I think on the last episode I'm sure in the in the um in a summer one as well I feel like uh yeah having that energy that you were talking about is also that it feels very scatty um with the ADHD I'd love to like hear a bit more from people who also have ADHD um to maybe I don't know email me uh you know comment on some of these things that you're seeing I'd love to know other people's experiences of it because I haven't really um got to talk to many people really with ADHD and about ovulation and even now where I'm at in my cycle I'm very aware that like I kind of I kind of have the urge to plan still and just kind of map out um the next sort of say sort of seven ish days because I am coming up to my ovulation and so I will have all of this energy and if I don't have an idea of where I want it to go it's very scattered and it's just not fun it doesn't feel like oh yeah it's just like ah I'm just like no I need to do a massive workout and I need to like have the stuff that I want to create you know I know there's like you know um thumbnails and things for our videos and stuff that I'll be doing so there's kind of things like that but actually just having it as a little prep um and not having it overwhelm myself so it's it's uh, it's an interesting you know the ovulation paradox with the ADHD in there as well and it's <laughs> yeah um, but I think yeah as you get older a lot of the women on this course were saying you know it's really just so liberating to just give less and less fucks you know the old you get in you know the women in menopause were like <laughs> it just doesn't really matter like you have to like yeah. really be okay with you and your decisions and it was just like oh yeah permission slip and it's so much easier from someone older that's gone through it for them to say yeah, yeah just permission slip just like give less of a shit you know and um yeah yeah so um we won't go into the five chambers of menstruation but I will just briefly touch on it um Ooh. so okay. I don't know what the they are. five chambers of menstruation uh, yeah yeah we haven't really spoken about this very much yeah. and I always forget the order of them all um so it's definitely something <laughs> I thought oh I'll look into a bit more we did a, a module on it with the with the red school practice um and I thought god I must revisit it because it was you know uh, an earlier earlier on I think and it was really incredible um and I think as well it would be cool to um I don't know if I'll if we'll do a podcast on each bit it might be kind of cool to do one on each chamber to be honest and just speak about our experiences but it's definitely mm-hmm. something that I'd really love to hopefully later on this year be guiding people through I think that would be really yeah. how I was guided through it um yeah because it's really just very sacred but it's it's basically sort of um we can have things like um sort of there's the chamber of separation where you kind of start to feel like you're you know that late autumn 
before you'll bleed maybe a couple of days where you just kind of have those moments I'll have them sometimes maybe I'm out on a walk and I'm suddenly like oh I'm not really in this oh where am I I'm not really on in, on the planet right now I'm not really grounded and they'll sometimes just pop in a little bit you know and you have things like the the void which is kind of this the, the it's just this kind of yeah this almost like this sort of limbo land um so we have these different sort of chambers that we can explore and that, so that's really sort of breaking up the, the menstruation itself. So it's almost like we have via positiva and negativa in like a half. And then we have the quadrants of the seasons, which, as we know, we explored a fifth season. You know, we don't have to have these rigid seasons. And it's interesting to see how we, we view that over the years um, and for experience. And then we kind of also have these little chambers within menstruation. Um, and it's, yeah, this, this, this yeah how we can kind of explore that more deeply and um with some sacred and also just some some real good rest um mm. so yeah I love that I love that it's really it's really interesting but it's just that there's so much to it so I won't um you know do, go into it really um any further but we'll definitely um we'll definitely talk about it in some future episodes because it just kind of breaks right. it down more and I think yeah. also it's good to I always kind of say because I'm still quite new to exploring the chambers, I've probably maybe done it for like sort of the last sort of six cycles, um, more of the red school, you know, with the practi- practicals. But um, with regards to that, it's, what was I doing with this thought? Hang on, I just had a thought and it went, <laughs> my brain's like, <laughs> with the chambers. Um, what was I saying? You're still learning about That them. thought's gone. Yeah, I'm still learning about them, still practicing them. Um, so we'll do a different podcast episode on them, maybe. Yes, I can't remember where that thought was going, so we'll just say that for now. <laughs> <laughs> completely gone from my brain. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's just yeah, it's just a very yeah, it's really it's a really interesting way to sort of practice it. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Sorry. So I always <laughs> kind of say day one is the first day of your bleed, your first day of winter, but um you could say that on say like a classic 28 day cycle we could say in a winter's sort of day 27 to day five because of oh. when we when we look into the chambers because of that oh. separation that kind of happens very late autumn um yeah. early winter you might kind of feel that a bit like i i will still be bleeding and maybe on like day three i can kind of it's almost like the estrogen's kind of come back and I'm technically I'm still bleeding I'm sort of in my in a winter but I also feel like oh maybe I'm kind of in my spring there's that sort of crossover because I feel like oh I just want to plan you know day day three or four I'm still bleeding a bit um but I'll have that you know so it's almost like a crossover so it's a little bit like that so if you feel like you're in your mm. winter before you bleed that is probably why maybe you're quite connected to your chambers um mm. anyway and you do yeah and so it's just happens, really interesting right? So, um, yes, yeah. maybe, if, maybe some people feel like when they start spotting, okay, I'm in winter now, even though that's not your yes, complete. Yeah, but... yeah, because it might depend where you are. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I go with ease, and especially with when you're news tracking, I tend to go day one is the first kind of full flow um, yeah, of the cycle. But that is still day one, but you could yeah. still be in your winter. You could still feel that a couple of days before. But that's so yeah. your your first day of a full bleed is still your day one, but you might feel yeah. wintry, you know, a couple yeah. of days before. So also, we'll explore that more. I think it'll be clearer with the menstruation chambers. Yeah. Mm. And also I remember one time I started my period and it was like eleven thirty at night or something. And I said, I don't know which day is day one. And you were like, Well, I would count tomorrow as day because it's nearly tomorrow but you know it's there's yeah I yes. guess my point is it's blur it's not there's no rigid lines in nature right things are blurred so no no <laughs> so for some yes. people you know so you're allowed to like well this is day one yeah What's that? Yeah. And also, as you kind of explore it further, then you'll kind of know, you know, you'll kind of get a feeling for whilst whilst again, we don't presume that every single cycle is the same. I might say, oh, I love, you know, I love my day two when I don't have to work, as you know, because it's my most sort of dreamy. I'm really dreamy. Um, Sometimes it seeps a bit into day three, but it's definitely like, oh, I'm like really relaxed. I'm very like just taking that dictation from the divine. It's very easy to rest. And I get these lovely oxytocin 
you know ripples where I'm like oh I just love me and it's really 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 <laughs> lovely and you know oh, I'm at home there it's really nice it's a good like yeah. self-love replenisher without having to really do anything yeah. while the doing yeah. is in the not doing which as we know is actually quite challenging yeah. um yeah so I like that the doing is within the not doing I'll have to yeah. remember that um <laughs> let me a catchphrase um, yeah. so yeah so it's um yes but yeah, like you say there's no you know there's no hard and fast rules I mean the big the big red rule that that Shani and Alexandra have is you know this may resonate it may not at all it might at a different time in your life cycle you know so it's really just um feeling what resonates and 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 being you know charting your cycle yeah. um yeah yeah so yeah and then there's a few other bits within that then so um just to kind of go into and this is I'm just reading it from my notes because this is really from the site and um of red school and i'll just read a couple of points but they kind of give these sacred tasks if you read the book wild powers that's in there but it's they kind of give these lovely sacred tasks which is really nice for you to focus on in the okay. you know in the seasons so with the via positiva they kind of speak about cultivating your inner champion and that's um a phrase kirsty morris which is one of their apprentices came up with um your inner champion and we can kind of have that as the opposition to our inner critic which I think we cover kind of a bit more familiar with again yeah. Julia you know the inner champion and the inner critic they deserve a whole you know podcast of, of their <laughs> own and I'm so excited to delve in because I yeah I love working with the inner critic now because she whipped my ass for like you know many years especially with the PMDD um, but she can really run rampant throughout the whole cycle. She's very kind of there in, in autumn. But if you're struggling yeah. with the inner critic, might look like uh, um, it's imposter syndrome, mm. especially when you start, if you start your own business, it really comes through then. That's when it really started to hit me. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, yeah. And so the inner yeah. champion is work that we can do to champion ourselves, which is, you know, really challenging. Yeah. Um, or can be and um, it's kind of the opposition of it and it's kind of like you know if the inner critic is going to be running rampant you do need to have something else that says no like you belong in this part of the cycle because you help me in this way here if you just run around all throughout the cycle you know if you're if you think of it you're trying to have a rest you know and maybe you have yeah. kids and you'll be like oh I managed to get them off to grandma's for the afternoon and I've got you know a bubble bath waiting and I can just have a rest and it's day two and I just need to restore and the inner yeah. critics you know with you in the bath going shouldn't you be doing the laundry yeah why the fuck are you having a rest you, you know all this stuff you know yeah. so it's really important to have that and Kirsty yeah. Morris uh, yeah came up with the inner champion so um and there's so many different ways we we can explore that um uh yeah I won't go into it now because I'll go off on another tangent but there's someone else in my brain and I'll I'll I'll, I'll think her I'll, yeah, yeah for that for that episode yeah um great and then, yeah, so the via negativa is kind of developing your relationship with with your inner critic and why it's important to do that. Um, and also yeah. kind of you may not befriend her, but you may. I called it sauntering with my inner critic when we were doing the uh, when we were doing red school. And I was kind of saying I'm learning to like saunter with it and just yeah. you know, <laughs> um, learn from it and be respectable to it because it's, it's trying to show me something. And the thing is, yeah. it will get louder and louder if you're not doing something. It's really that guidance of like. You know, now I'm doing this work, my mm. inner critic is way kinder. Uh, and when I wasn't doing this, when I wasn't yeah. doing, even though I was like, I want to do a podcast, I want to speak about more, I want to just, I just want to talk about periods and cycles with people, you know, and I wasn't doing it, it was really, really, really rampant, like all of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just so interesting to me. And then, and then they kind of give you other, you know, other little things. Again, I think they're, they're covered in the book, but inner winter is kind of surrendering yourself. In a spring is cherishing yourself, which I love. Oh. Um, in a autumn is uh, in a summer, sorry, is celebrating yourself, and in a autumn is um, holding yourself, um, or more precisely, hold the tension of the complexity of who you are. That's from yeah. um, I'll cite it, but I love that. And we talked about holding the tension, and yeah. again, I kind of you know when I was, um, I think when I was visiting you, I was like, we can hold the tension everywhere in all areas of our life, and I was you know getting all these ideas, and yeah, it's just it's just painting to me um yeah. how long have we got Julia because my alarm's just gone off uh six minutes so maybe oh, wrap oh. up time we'll do a little yeah we'll do a little wrap up um yeah. so I think that yeah um you know we have so we have the inner critic and a set kind of second half of our cycle um and it can be quite tricky to you know to learn to sort of you know have have them as our friend you know have our inner critic as our friend but it really also helps us to 
to to say no and to be okay with saying no which is what we need from that part from the via negativa part of our cycle and Mm. then the inner champion you know that's kind of our ally especially in the via positiva um and it's you know it's it's kind of that yeah the, the the agency you know the power of saying yes in your cycle and supporting yourself and being your own you know your own best you know kind of champion with that work and you know when we just have one without the other you know it, it's just all hell breaks loose I think so we need to have both <laughs> a bit like you know kind of the, the poles of menstruation and ovulation we we kind of yeah. do need to have both of them um yeah. and so yeah I think that's kind of that's the biggest thing like I said I'll leave some links because there's some really great articles that really kind of dive in a bit deeper on the Red School website um yeah. and I also just didn't want to sit here and like read off a load of stuff you know yeah. of their notes because yeah. that's where it's come from and I just thought yeah. it'd be more interesting to kind of speak a little bit about our experiences where we're kind of at with it um yeah and I just Definitely. um yeah but we'll do it we'll do one on inner champion um yeah we'll do one on the, the inner critic I think that'd be really cool yeah um because there's just so many things so many tangible things from doing the course as well that I learned and I was like oh because I kind of had these ideas of stuff I was doing and then other people share and you're like oh my god that's a great idea and you know all this work <laughs> as well it's it's it doesn't have to be like you don't have to like buy a million things to do it or carve out a million hours to do it all it's just it really is just little you know starting with the tracking you know that's it's quite um simple and yeah you know it doesn't require a a lot of painful (laughs) yeah um yeah just you know all the stuff really so I don't know Julia if there's anything else you wanted to add to this one I mean I know um you know you're quite new to the positiver negative yeah. I was yeah sort of I was just like I'm learning <laughs> I feel like mm, I yeah 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 because I didn't really know much about them so I feel better informed um yeah yeah I'm looking forward so, to talking more about the uh the other bits the chambers and the um mm. how they fit in the the circle of the cycle yeah. <laughs> yes yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, be good. so interesting to me. And also just yeah. how we can, yeah, enjoy the, the menstruation kind of, you know, the the steps it kind of takes. Because sometimes it is like, you know, you, know, you kind of need that um, in order to kind of slow down and rest. You kind of, it's a bit like, why do I need feel like I need a how-to guide? But I kind of do, and I feel like the chambers kind of give you that a bit more guidance. Oh, bless you. Um, Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think as as always, no, that's all right. As always, um, yeah, you know, check out the Ready, Steady chart freebie. Yeah. It should be wherever you're seeing this. Um, there should be a link for it. Um, and again, you know, um, if you're not sure where you're most comfortable in your positiva or negativa, again, it's just starting to track. Um, it also might be interesting to see how that's changed over the years. Um, and, yeah. uh, and as always, I'd love anyone that has ADHD, um, to yeah. let me know, how do you find your, especially ovulation? I'm like, Oh, I just want to see like that frantic energy. Is it just me? <laughs> yeah. Sure it um, yeah. but I'm always just you know, in, intrigued to learn. Um, so I think we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up there, but yeah. thanks everyone. And thank Julia again for joining us for mm-hmm. free flow. And yeah. um, we will see you next time and we'll yeah. maybe dive into uh, perhaps the chambers will be the next thing that we explore. But um, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. All right. <laughs> Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>